Ah, the adventures continue. Here we have a rebuilt engine. It runs quite nicely, but it overheats. So, the story behind this is that the machine shop double dipped this thing to clean the rust out of it. And then I found out, you know, years later, since I haven't driven it, ran only for short periods, that they left all the crud inside. So it was full of rust and old black slime. It was all from the uh, dip process. So I took the thermostat out and I opened the radiator and I tried to flush it with water and a hose. Got a bunch of crud out of there. And I think I got most of that out. But it's still overheating. Not as fast, but it still overheats. So I don't know the state of that pressure cap. So I will probably get a new one. But in the meantime, I checked it the other day and I had replaced the thermostat, which is 62 degrees Celsius, which is quite low. And it's quite low because the hot water has to rise from the engine to open the thermostat. So the engine is actually running quite a bit hotter than that is. So that was changed because the other one was sticking. So that helped, of course. Then we have down in here in the darkness an opening. And that's where I had the water pump, which I've taken off. And I found that the impeller uh, has a spec of 50 to 90 thousandths. And it was uneven. And I will uh, show you that in a minute. But I also noticed that the flow was not great through the radiator. It was there, but it wasn't, uh, I would have thought it would be faster. So what I've done today is I took out the water pump and I plugged the bottom of the radiator after draining everything, flushed in equal parts water and this cleaning vinegar here, just 10%. Um, the most or the least diluted that they list on the label is about two to one and from my experience in the past cleaning off mineral deposits from medical equipment um, closer one to one works better as long as you're not trying to do it with stainless steel which this is not it's all copper copper and brass so I have filled the radiator with a one-to-one -one mixture of vinegar and water. And I'm letting it sit for 24 hours and then I'll drain it again. But I did notice lots of crud coming out. And I'll show you some of the state of the antifreeze that I drained. Um, look, I drained the antifreeze previously, but the um, some of the overflow, because I still had the pans underneath, flowed into the drain pans. I'll show you that state. And here's the antifreeze. That was nice clean antifreeze that I just put in. So that's what it looks like now with just a little bit of overflow out of the radiator. Not very good. So I'll let that settle and uh, hopefully I can resurrect the antifreeze. If not, I'll be buying two to three more. That's what got flushed out of the radiator. A fair bit of grit and rust in there. I don't see much in the way of mineral, but we'll see if the flow has increased. And I bought this handy dandy oven thermometer to check the temperature of the car. And it's got a uh, 162 degree Fahrenheit thermostat in it now which is what it's supposed to have and it's which is about 72 C so it's sitting 73 so it's working all right uh, the gauge is still indicating hot so I've got to adjust that yet but at least now I know that that particular problem has been cured at least until I get it on the road and see it under load but sitting idling 
it's staying constant at uh, low 70s so that's okay there's a water pump that I took and adjusted the clearance for the veins against the body of the pump did that just by tapping it down the shaft a little bit more and straightening it slightly slightly bent and then I flushed it again I put 10% vinegar in the radiator and that took out a lot of crud so now it seems to be working okay which is a relief that's one thing that seems to be solved we'll see another problem that I did not expect at all part of the car's history it has a nice low profile nice low stance in the front see there kind of low and the reason it's low is that at one point this was owned by a person who sold airlift shocks and I know that because I found a pile of brochures under the back seat so my theory is he had it lowered in the front and it had airbags in it when I got it so it was a demo machine see when your front suspension or your rear suspension sags you can put these things in so the annoying thing is that I had springs for it from another car and two moves ago I recycled them because what am I ever going to need those for not realizing that this thing sat low eh, brother so now I gotta try and find some so now I gotta try and find some and the reason I have to try and find some is because when I turn sharply the tires scrape on the fenders Urgh. I did film the vanes adjustment the impeller adjustment on the water pump and I'm not sure what happened to it it was well, it should have been on the SD card of the camera, but it's not there now. So I guess it didn't tape. Sorry about that. It's in the car now, so kind of hard to take it out. If you uh, ever check the workshop manual, it's a fairly simple process. It just involves adjusting using a feeler gauge, tapping it down till you get the proper clearance from the impeller vanes to the body of the water pump. Say la vie. Sorry about that. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or even notify, or any of the above, or all of the above. Thank you.